Hey there. I've never disputed that there are real problems with contemporary Islam. The way that the ideology is used, both within Muslim countries and abroad, is sometimes very problematic. I also do not dispute the idea that certain Muslim populations, both in their own countries and as migrants, have some very real issues that need to be addressed. What I do dispute is the idea that there's some special, uh, eternal sickness to do with Islam. Nobody is engaging with these issues honestly. One side thinks Islam is evil. The other side says nice things while doing everything in their power to perpetuate the issues that create the problem with Islam. At the end of the day, the Quran is just an old book. These issues don't go back 1400 years. They're all about contemporary economics and politics. Since I started this series a week ago, I've heard from a lot of people who want to tell me what's wrong with Islam. They do it in large blocks of text. Uh, sometimes times with a lot of hate and profanity. These comments all look kind of similar and they talk about the same issues. Sometimes they've clearly been cut and pasted from the same source. We all get it guys, you don't like Muslims. A lot of this stuff can be discounted immediately. For example, comparing American and Arabian slavery is not a useful exercise. Conquests that happened 500 years ago are interesting, but not all that important for contemporary issues. Now, as much as it pains me to admit it, these guys do make a few valid points. For example, I think it's true that certain mainstream media outlets are underplaying crimes committed by migrant populations in Europe. I also think that's a good thing. Let's step back and take a look for a second at what has just happened here. Over a million people were torn away from their homes and placed in an alien environment. It's amazing that there aren't more problems. In fact, Islam might make people less violent, not more. Trust me, if Sweden had taken in 190,000 rural Americans, we'd all be talking about the Swedish Civil War right now. The commenters are also right to point out that some unpleasant things happen in Muslim countries as well. Honor killings, female genital mutilation, horrifying disrespect for women's and LGBT rights. The standard response to this is that these things are problems of development, and that's absolutely true. These problems are about poverty not religion. You can see similar issues in other poor, non-Muslim countries. As most countries get richer, these problems will fade. It's not about which old book they choose to organize their lives around. In 2017, we've actually got genocidal Buddhists, if you can believe that. So it's about development. But because the establishment wants to protect Saudi Arabia, they don't complete the argument. It's not just that Muslim countries are poor, it's that one of them isn't. The problem of Islam isn't just about development. The problem of Islam is uneven development. As European countries developed from the 15th through the 17th centuries, religious fighting was a big part of the story. Every power had a version of religion that they were pushing. But that's the thing. There were many, many powers. They were all competing, and they were all pushing very different forms of religion. No single sect could dominate, and Europe eventually arrived at a kind of tolerance. I say, Henry, why don't we throw over all this religious garbage and see how our countries do? But of course. Ha <laughs> ha, eat our dust. The more tolerant countries ended up winning. There's a reason everybody speaks French and English. The Muslim countries haven't yet had a similar opportunity to develop competitively. For 50 years, one Muslim country has been richer than all the others. And that country, Saudi Arabia, has used its wealth to push one angry, violent version of the Islamic faith. Even worse, it's had the help of the world's richest and most powerful country, working to amplify the spread of that faith as well. In Saudi Arabia, this crazy ideology is kept in check by a public relations sensitive royal family and a kind of first world level of development. When it's introduced in poor countries, you get chaos. 
Once you are aware of this dynamic, the only surprising thing about the problems of Islam is how small they are. This is the central truth of Sunni Islam today, and it's a truth that nobody else wants to tell you. If you want to learn more about the true problems of Islam and how to solve them, I suggest you pick up my new essay, Everybody's Lying About Islam, available now. Also, you may want to chip into my crowdfunding thing at Patreon. YouTube just dramatically cut the revenues of all political news channels. If I can't get my Patreon dollars up pretty soon, this channel may have to end. Thanks.